So La Femme was uh, uh, a tremendous success in a sense that it uh, it uplifts women, and it's I guess in their fourth year, Patrick. It is, yeah. I've, I've I've participated in some level for a couple of years, and it's always good. You know, it's always good to have good-looking women with jobs. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, and. Uh, they come up with stories that are great, and I love to, both as an actor and as a, a film executive, I like sort of cultural prowling and seeing what I can find, and um, so it's it's nice to find young talents and people who are doing things of inventive nature wherever you go. I just came tonight from Screen Fest Film Festival where I had a film that was playing Parasomnia and, uh, and then juxtaposition that with over here at the, the Femme Festival. So it's, uh, you know, it's a great wide world and you try to cover as much as you possibly can. One of the uh, actors that I thought was really inspirational and he was a very passionate man and I knew him just before he passed away and that was Anthony Quinn. Oh he's awesome. His son is a good friend of mine, Francesco. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact he's involved in one of the films I'm getting ready to direct called um, uh, Vain Attempt. But yeah, I mean, come on, I, I did Requiem for Heavyweight in uh, theater and he of course made the, won an Academy Award for the, uh, the film. Awesome actor, awesome. Just one of the lions of Hollywood. Which do you prefer, directing uh -huh. or acting? You know, I love all of it. Um, I like writing, I like raising money. I like, um, just there's nothing like somebody writing a check for your film. There's nothing like uh, really banging down a, a film job. Um, uh, writing is a wonderful experience, particularly I do it with a great team of people. Um, and so it's, it's, it's the curse of a liberal arts education. You know, you end up doing a lot of things. It intrigues me how this business has changed. Uh -huh. uh, how motion pictures uh, have transgressed into uh, a lot of action, a lot of violence. And I'm not so sure that's so good for kids that are watching television, but then it really boils down to the parents controlling what they let their kids watch. But as an actor, I know you have a job to do. Right. But where does it end as far as responsible on what kids see and what you do as an actor playing that part that may influence that kid to do something negative? Well, I've played a lot of villains, so it's a big, wide question you ask. Um, I have two sons. The lot of research that I see um, says that uh, after the age of eight years old, they have no trouble um, differentiation between reality and, and prior. So I think it's really important for children not to see violent films prior to that. The exception to that is when, say, for me and my sons, when it was a great creative enterprise, and perhaps had some historical significance, like Saving Private Ryan. My father got a silver star at Okinawa in World War II, so my young sons and I watched Saving Private Ryan, and we talked about it and used it as an object lesson. I, you know, I've played a lot of villains, a lot of violent people, um, and sometimes I've questioned the value of it. Um, the problem is drama usually has villains, and it usually has some sort of, going back to Shakespeare, some sort of violence and all of that. So um, I think the biggest sin is lack of creativity, not the violence or the sexuality. I think if something is aesthetically original, and aesthetic, aesthetically cutting edge, then there's a case for all different kinds of film. You take a film like Reservoir Dogs. It was very violent, but it was very, very brilliantly done. Or The Wild Bunch, very, very brilliantly done. In its day, Untouchables was very, very violent for television, but they were brilliantly done. So for me, that's the litmus test, not whether there's violence in it, not whether there's sexuality. Now, we have responsibility as artists and filmmakers to do it. Personally, my film company, we have some violent movies. I'm doing a big pirate movie that takes place in the 1700s, brutal world. So to tell the story, you have brutality. But every one of our movies is about leading towards redemption. And I think the greatest movies have always done that. They've tried to show some sort of redemption. Um, if you're a thief 
or a murderer, there is a way to redemption. So that's what we're trying to do at Uncommon Dialogue Films, my company. It's a big issue, but I think much greater issue is the banality of a lot of the stuff, not the violence or the sexuality. You know, kids know what excellence is uh, on some fundamental level. It's it's food. Let's see. You know, food is is the fat content the thing that's important. No, what's important is is it comprised of pure elements. I think one of the biggest issues, and I'm being long-winded, but one of the biggest issues is a lack of aesthetics. If you choose the right things in your life, whether it's food or clothing or cars or whatever, for the right beautiful reasons, then you're going to end up with a much, much finer earth. And that brings me to this point. <coughs> Out of all the works that you've done, which one are you most proudest of? whether it be playing the villain or perhaps a, a, a film that has a message to it that people can learn from? Well, you know, I'm working with the great, masterful directors. I've worked with Steven Spielberg. I've worked with Nicholas Rogue, who's one of the greatest directors of the 20th century, still working in the 21st century. I've worked with Chuck Russell's a good, highly visual commercial director. <clears throat> in Eraser, um, I'm proud of all of the acting work I did because I think of myself as one soldier in, 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 in the enterprise. Um, and I'm proud of the hundred films and television shows that I've done. Um, <clears throat> speaking of violence, I just played the Terminator on Sarah Connor Chronicles. Very violent part, but very well written and uh, has a lot of good messages within the context. People ask me which was my favorite job. It's like saying which is your favorite child. Every job, whether you're doing a Star Trek job or clearly working with Steven Spielberg on Minority Report was a great job. But everyone has something. I've done the worst jobs on the planet and gotten some really good thing out of it. Um, I did a movie, a little horror movie called The Cellar. And personally, I got my dog. Um, on the shoot, so it's a very meaningful experience for me. Plus, uh, even the bad jobs, you learn about what's going on, and you learn about maybe you don't want to be involved in that again. They're pivotal in your in your career. I've gotten a great deal. I'm just blessed that I've been able to do this for 25 years. Do you enjoy doing a, a television series where there's a lot of script? Where you know it's you don't do as many takes as when you do a motion picture, or do you prefer doing the motion picture work? Well, you know, my feeling is if you have two hundred million dollars, anybody can direct a two hundred million dollar film or a hundred million dollar film. I really enjoy directors, whether big budget or low budget, that really know what they're doing and uh, move along economically. Um, I mentioned Steven Spielberg. He's probably the most economical big budget director I've ever worked with. I mean, Steven, he knows how to cut out stuff, how to go right through. And it's, it's like he's spending his own money with every single one. I just did a movie called, um, well, I, the title's a little iffy, but it's called Sex, Blood, and Fights, and it's about ultimate fighting. Right? Very popular in Las Vegas, too. Um, yeah. But... You know, I worked with the, the director and writer and the star of the movie, because he's kind of like the Jean-Claude Van Damme of Argentina, was a guy named Hector Echevarria. So skilled. One take. Boom. Move on. Boom. Move on. And it's really cool to work on that. I think sometimes the big budget movies are a little boring. Mm -hmm. You know, because they do 20 takes of a doorknob opening. Nobody has to do that. You need to know what you're doing. Hitchcock didn't do that. Kubrick didn't do it. Even it's obsessively perfection as they are, they don't, they don't have to do that. They move along and get it done. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. This is Patrick Kilpatrick, and I'm urging you to check out Bionic Tonic.